Soup, we're almost uh, done, but one of the things I wanted to have you let our alumni know is given the world affairs we see today, the Arab uprisings in uh, April, uh, all of the dislocations in the Straits of Hormuz, uh, as we move forward in this century, do you view this as a maritime century and a one where the maritime strategy and the Naval Academy's importance is more significant than ever before? I think so. I think so. I mean, we, of course, we we all went to Mahan Hall and we just sort of accepted the fact that this father of sea power was, was somebody that was intimate to the Naval Academy and the teachings there that, uh, that we just sort of took for granted. And uh, I do believe that it, this is a maritime century. It hasn't started out that way. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, as you look at the future uh, of where the economies, the world economies are going, you look at the significance of this 90% of the commerce that travels on the great waters and the necessity for security there and, and also the interaction between the many nations that front on the water, because it's almost all of them, uh, the, uh, that that international language that we were taught uh, at the Naval Academy as naval officers uh, writ large uh, ultimately will stand the nation in, in good stead. So yeah, I do believe that the relevance of the new strategy that President Obama has just put out is it harkens back to the same strategies in many key tenets in terms of the, 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 the wisdom of investing in sea power and ensuring that the officers and sailors that are out there on those ships and packing those, those heavy packs for the Marine Corps are uh, are the most professional, uh, have the highest integrity, and the greatest international exposure and awareness of the, of the complex planet that they will serve on to ensure the future of this great nation for years to come. Oh, that's fantastic. We talk about the investment in the Naval Academy and whether it will be worthwhile in this century to continue to, to make that investment, both as a federal government and as supporters of the Academy. What's your view on the return on investment today for the Naval Academy education? And can you cite, you know, given the headlines today, some of the leaders who are graduates that would give people a sense of why the Naval Academy is still relevant and why an investment in the Naval Academy is still important today? Well, you know, it's interesting. Of course, it, you know, I, I sit next to one of the most famous math majors to ever graduate from the Naval Academy. But, but you know, the Academy's produced more astronauts than any school in America, 52. And so who's the administrator for NASA? Well, it's Major General Charlie Bolton. Uh, I, I look at the uh, at, at at people that are given the greatest challenges, and uh, and and it might be right here at Carver Academy. It might be trying to save uh, the largest corporation in America. And uh, and Dan Ackerson, the class of 1970, stood up to that challenge. And I can't imagine what that must have felt like to say, okay, I'm taking a a company that's bankrupt. And as David said, you know, so many people's livelihoods depend on his success. Mm. And what a tremendous responsibility that, that must feel like. And yet Dan has done that so successfully. I, I look at our leadership ar around, certainly in the Navy, because if you want to you wanna see who's leading, it's Sam Locklear about to take over out in uh, Sink Pack, and he's relieving a Naval Academy graduate, Bob Willard. You look at uh, the Pacific Fleet that's now led by uh, Admiral Cecil Haney. You look at the Chief of Naval Operations, John Greenard, or the Vice Chief, who's uh, Mark Ferguson. All of these people, and of course General John Allen, who's in charge uh, over there in Afghanistan. And, and I, I believe that, yes, the, the school might be federally funded. It might be uh, polished and, in fact, brought to an, a higher level by all of our alumni and by the foundation. But ultimately, the return on investment is, is something that is well beyond those mm -hmm. dollars spent. Mm -hmm. I, because I, I really do believe it's an investment in, in America's future. And you look at, the, at what we see right now in Afghanistan and what we had seen in Iraq, what our, what our alumni have both sacrificed for and what they have stood against. And you can't help but be amazed by mm -hmm. their perseverance, their resilience, their incredible strength and courage. And, uh, and I would offer that that is the true value of a Naval Academy education. Yeah, no, no question. Well said. So, David, one last question, and I appreciate your time today. Yeah, my pleasure. pleasure to be here with you in San Antonio. You just rattled off a whole bunch of initiatives. <laughs> Admiral Capital Group, Carver Academy, Admiral Center, uh, and your family. 
and yet you have given the Naval Academy a priority in your life. Now, a lot of people say, you know what, I'm too busy, and they create excuses. Can you tell people why you've continued to make the Naval Academy a priority in your life and why you think it's important to give back to the Academy in that context? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it was a part of shaping who I am. <laughs> and that's, uh, it's as simple as you can put it. Uh, I, I tend not to forget where I came from, and, and, and I, I like to give credit where credit is due. The Bible says, always give honor to whom honor is due. And, and I, you know, that's why I will always love and respect my mother and father, because they laid a great foundation for me. They pushed me, they helped create the man that I am. Uh, and I, I credit the Naval Academy for shaping me, shaping my discipline, shaping my focus, and my sense of service. What it means to serve. Um, you know, even for everything from being in the Olympics and putting on that USA uniform, I knew what it felt like to put on a uniform and represent 250 million people. I, I knew what that feeling felt like. And so walking out there for the Olympics was, a, was an incredible honor for me and an incredible responsibility. And, and you know, people may think that's silly, but it's, it's not silly because I understood what the service means. And, and now, um, like the Admiral said, People around the country are giving tremendous honor and respect to our, our, our military personnel from all over because of their service. And yes, that may go up and down, but um, that does not diminish in any way the fact that they're ready to lay their lives down for this country, for our way of life. Uh, and, and the Naval Academy played that role for me. And I want these little children, these four and five year old kids to understand if you're not willing to lay your life down for something, then you don't believe it. You know, then you don't, you, you, you know, it, it hasn't really meant anything to you. I'm ready to lay my life down for my wife, for my family, for my country, for my God. And, and, and those are the type of people I want to be around. And so, I believe the Naval Academy creates those type of people, and I will, <laughs> I'll support it as long as I live because it, it helped create the man that I am. That's fantastic. Well, many people may talk to you about your MBA career, but I just want to conclude our conversation by saying today, for me, it's a conversation about honor, integrity, and leadership. Oh, and uh, your MBA career is a byproduct of that. But I, yes, I view you first and foremost as a leader in the community. I thank you for your service. Well, thanks, Byron. Appreciate that. Appreciate thank you. Being here today. Thanks, David. Thank and you, I would Adam. offer that uh, that th this is the first time I think we've done an interview where all three of us were successful and had mustaches. <laughs> <laughs>